She fought her entire life to do something most of us take for granted. Eva Markvoort was born with cystic fibrosis, and while she struggled every day to breathe, those who knew her say she lived vibrantly. She kept a blog that documented her struggle with cystic fibrosis and drew thousands of readers, too. She was hailed as a beacon of hope and received the Summer Hayes Award from the Canadian Cystic Fibrosis Association. Ava Markvoort passed away on Saturday morning in Vancouver. She was a few days short of 26. Nimisha Murkaji is a Vancouver-based filmmaker, and last year her documentary on Ava's struggles with cystic fibrosis won the Audience Award at the Vancouver International Film Festival. We reached Miss Murkaji in Vancouver. Miss Murkaji, you know, when you read stories of... Um, people like Ava Markford, you realize that heroism comes in many different forms. And you probably know that better than I do. You said that when you worked with her, she was more than just a subject in front of a camera. What did you mean by that? Um, Ava was, you know, my partner in making this film. It was, um, it was, it was something that she wanted to create as part of her legacy. And uh, she wasn't just, you know, a subject. When we finished the film, she was a huge, um, a huge part of the promotion of this film, and she worked tirelessly to promote it. I, I was just remembering uh, yesterday that when the film was being screened at the Vancouver International Film Festival, uh, me and her went around postering, uh, like stores, going into stores and trying to convince them to put up a poster of the film. And you know, I don't think that, I don't think that usually happens. It's very rare that someone wants to be involved. At that level, you know, she was someone I talked to pretty much every day while we were filming and every day since we finished uh, the film. I think because the message of the film was so important to her, the message about organ donation, she knew that the film would be a way to reach uh, people beyond her community here. Right. And, uh, and it did. <laughs> now, you documented her difficult struggles in 2007. Um, what was Eva going through during that period? Ava was on the wait list um, for the first time for a double lung transplant. She was full of hope. She was very optimistic that it was going to happen for her and that uh, she would get, you know, she would get a second chance at life. And I think that what we tried to show in the film was that while she was full of hope, it was a daily, you know, struggle, um, and it was also a very steady decline. And that it's very hard um, in the when you're living on the edge of, of life and death um, to keep your spirits up. And also, her family played a very important role in that um, in that support, as well as her online friendship. I want to talk about that. But her body eventually rejected the the, the transplant, but she blogged about her struggles. She had a devout following. Um, why were her readers so faithful to her? Do you think? You know, she was inspired by other other CF patients. Um, earlier than her, who she had been reading and following their blog. And I think that Ava felt that it was important to be honest and to be a, way, a voice not only for CF pa uh, patients, but to also give um, people insight into what it's like to be, you know, to be facing something, um, something so difficult on a, on a daily basis basis. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be a terminal illness. I think Ava was very clear about that. Um, people have many different demons. I think that she just knew that, you know, where the film and, you know, where the film ended, um, you know, it's a documentary. So when you stop filming, it doesn't mean that someone's life stops. And um, what I always loved about her blog is that it was able to con continue her story in her own voice and on her own terms. And um, what's so great about a blog is that there's no censorship. So she was allowed to to speak freely, and you could, she could do it from anywhere. She could do it from her hospital room. Do you think she got more support from the blog? Did she give more support, or, or was it a combination of, of both? It was definitely a combination. I know that in the last few months, uh, the support that she received online, um, I think, really helped her. It gave her a lot of strength, uh, all, the, all the comments that were left on her blog. And at the same time, it kept her going so that she kept blogging. Even though, even when it was really hard to to talk about um, how painful it really was, um, having to kind of come to terms with the fact that her life was, you know, 
coming to an end. Now, the blog and the documentary itself was called 65 Red Roses. What's the story behind the name? Uh, 65 Red Roses uh, is Ava's online name, and um, when kids are little within the CF community, they have trouble saying cystic fibrosis, so they say 65 roses instead. <laughs> and um, Ava's favorite color was red. Um, she dyed her hair red when she felt you know, at her best, and so um, the blog's name became 65 Red Roses, and then we adopted that for the film. And uh, you know, and and you think what in the end was the message she gave through the film and to the people who followed her on the blog? The one thing that Ava always made really clear was that if the film, you know, inspired even one person to become a donor, that it was worth it because uh, you know it's it it has the potential to save a life. So you know you should feel uh, you know proud yourself if i may say so to have been part of of her own heroism because you know if that is the case you had a role in that as well as she did um is there one thing that you remember what will remember most about her or is that an unfair question i'm sure you have so many different um, memories <laughs> yeah eva gave me so many gifts i know that um one of the biggest moments for us was when the film screened for the first time at the at the hot dogs international film festival and uh it was like right before the the film screening, and she was her healthiest. And I think I'll always remember her. I'd, I'd like to always remember her that way because her spirit was just infectious. <laughs> it just hit everyone. And um, I know that when the film aired on CBC, um, we found out from BC Transplant Society that they saw the numbers triple in, uh, in organ donors. And uh, I think she was very proud of that. Well, you know, it's not easy for you to talk about this, obviously, but, you know, I really appreciate you having taken the time to do so. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Okay, bye. bye-bye. Namisha McCourgy is a documentary filmmaker in Vancouver, and her film 65 Red Roses will be rebroadcast on CBC Television's The Passionate Eye this Friday. The subject of that documentary, Ava Markvort died on Saturday at the age of 25.